in these bad times that we have the greatest opportunity to grow stronger in grace. Yeah, if it was a mistake you made, you, you can learn from it so that it never happens again. If it was something that was out of your control, you suck it up and uh, you now become better prepared if it ever come back around and give you the same problems. I'm here to tell you that when life hits you hard, it will cause you to look at life different. Yeah, it has been said many times that it's not about how many times that you fall down, but it's about how many times that you get back up. And this is exactly the right mentality to have because in life you will, not if, but you will get knocked down. But the question is, will you get back up? Yeah, my brothers and sisters, life sometimes can knock you so hard. It can hit you so hard that it can cause you to lose all sense. It can cause you to sometimes want to lose your mind. When life hits you hard, it begins to question whether or not you really want to serve a God who says he's so loving, but yet you are surrounded by so much hateful, hurtful people when you, you get hit by life, it calls you to question, is this walk of Christianity really worth it all? When life hits you hard, it asks, you ask a hard question, I, I give all of my money, my tithes and offering, but yet I find myself broke every week, every month, every year, struggling, trying to put food on the table, struggling, trying to pay my bills, struggling, trying to put gas in the car. When life hits you off, yeah. it'll cause you to ask yourself the hard questions. Am I really a child of God? Because if I'm really your child of God, then why is it that I'm going through so much hell? Why is it that no matter how much I pray, it appears that you're not hearing me. It doesn't matter how straight I walk. It appears that crooked seems to be following me. It doesn't matter how right I choose to be. It seems like wrong is always at my door. Is there anybody here that has ever been hit so hard in life that it will cause you to question your religion, your relationship, your, your, your commitment to God? Is there anybody here that know that life will hit you hard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if you do it right, my brothers and sisters, if you ask the right questions, you will become a better person. You will realize that everything happens for a reason. And the challenge is figuring out uh, what that, that reason is. You, you see, when we go through uh, the shadows of death in our life, we must know for certainty and believe with a surety that Jesus Christ has defeated uh, everything in all things by his death and through his victorious resurrection. You have to understand that when life hits you hard, you're not the only one that has ever been hit with a hard punch. I wish I had some help up in here. That's why it's important that we continue to fellowship every Sunday morning. That's why it's important, New Bethel, that you show up every Sunday morning. It's because somebody look how hard life has hit you, but yet you're still standing. That's good news for the individual that's sitting next to you because they see evidence of that life may hit you, but you can still make it. I wish I had some help up in here. And so my brothers and sisters, life may seem so hopeless and unfair, and sometimes life is unfair. But God, Jesus, never said that life would be fair. But he did say that he'll never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. He never said that the road will be easy. He never said that things will be smooth. He never said that you will never have heartache, headache, backaches, or any other aches. He never said that. But he did say that I've already overcome and to be a good cheer. I love a good soldier when they out in the war field and yet they can still hold their head up high with a smile on their face with hands lifted up 
and said, if he never done anything else for me, he's already done enough. Yes, I may be in hell and hot water. Yes, I may be at the brink of losing everything, but the God I serve, he's able to restore and to deliver my brothers and sisters, perhaps. Uh, you may be feeling empty or destitute, uh, and you may have all sort of feelings and uneasy emotions during this pandemic, during this season. Some of us may have lost loved ones. Some of us uh, may have uh, broken families, and some of us may have lost our jobs. Some of us may have lost our income. Some of us may have been devastated and lives have been destroyed because of this pandemic. But can I give you some good news about this pandemic? Can I give you some encouraging words about this pandemic? Can I just share with you one good, great news about this pandemic? This pandemic is not bigger than God's power. That God is still in control. I don't care how bad things get. I don't care how ugly things is. I don't care how grown things may become. God is still in control. Look at you. You still look good. Look at you. You still got clothes on your back. Look at you. You're still able to breathe out and inhale in. Look at you. You still got your wind tight, high and tight. Look at you. You still got your nails done. Look at you. You still got a good suit on. God is still making a way for you. And because he's making a way for you, pandemic will not bother you. Listen, as black people, as poor black people, we, we know how to come through the muck and mire and clay. I'm here to tell you, we know how to take a pack of hot dogs and some pork and beans and make a five-course meal out of something. We know how to take a bag of rice and some potatoes, and we know how to chop them up, pour them, and we know how to throw in uh, some fat back in ham and make a whole meal out of it. So we've always been in a pandemic. Every day of our lives being black is a pandemic all by itself. That's why you are not never be worried. That's why you are every day lift up your hands because you've always been in a pandemic. It's just love of people that never been in this position before. But if you know that you know that God has always delivered. Listen, I know, I know times are hard. And, and, and when life hits us hard, I need us to look at three things that we can get on the body here. In the text today, uh, there are some promises, there are some things uh, that can help us from this text this morning. Yeah. That when life hits us hard, the first thing we got to do is we got to learn how to get to a designated place. Okay. It's right here in the text. The, the, the Bible says that let us therefore come boldly into the throne yeah. of grace. Yeah. The throne of grace, a, a designated place. A, 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 a throne of grace. What is grace? Grace is God's unmerited favor. Some says grace is God's uh, redemption at Calvary's expense. And God says that I don't deserve it, but I'm going to give it to you anyhow. That's grace. That's how grace works. Grace says that you don't deserve it, but God is going to give it to you anyhow. Any of y'all ever had children, and you raised children, and they done all kind of wrong. And yet, but you still bless them, even though they don't deserve it. They haven't taken up the garbage. They haven't made up their room. They had not made up the dishes. Hadn't mopped the floors. Hadn't vacuumed. Hadn't did their homework. Got bad grades. But yet, you still give them grace. I wish I had some help over here. Okay, that was your children. But you do know that you are a child of God. Don't you know that every time that when you don't tell the Lord thank you, he still bless you? Don't you know that every time you don't give God recognition, he still blesses you? Don't you know that every time you don't give God what's rightfully do his first, he still blesses you? I just wish I had some real people in the house this morning that understood that even though I don't deserve it, God's grace is still given unto me. And this gracious act, my brothers and sisters, allows us to be thankful for everything that God has ever done 
in our lives. And in spite of the difficulties that we may experience, the throne of God is the place, is the designated place where we can let it all out. I wish I had some help up in here. And, and, and whatever's in you and whatever that's paining you, whatever that's, that, that's causing you ill, I'm here to tell you, there is a designated place that you can go to to unleash and to uh, release everything that is hurting you, that is ailing you, that is concerning you, that is worrying you. There is a designated place, and that designated place is the throne of God. Where is the throne of God? The throne of God is wherever you are. Yeah, yeah. Your, your throne can be your vehicle. Your throne can be your closet. Your throne uh, can be your job. Your throne can, can, can be your church house. Your throne can be wherever you are. And the reason why the throne can be wherever you are is because God is everywhere at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the throne of grace can be at the grocery store. You ever been shopping and just realize how good God has been? Oh man, I get happy every time I go to the produce aisle because there was a time when I knew I could afford some of this produce that I can afford now in today's time. But ooh, when I get to the produce section, I get to pick out oranges and grapes and apples and pears and pineapples and bananas and uh, oh my God. But that was only the time I had to get one banana off the branch. Yeah, there were times where I had to go to the grocery store and, and, and grab a few breaks and Ed and while I was right there. Y'all not going to get it this morning. But there was a time where, where, where I had to go in, in the neighbor's yard and grab an apple off the tree. I wish I had some help. But now, I don't even have to go fishing in the river anymore. God has blessed me so much that I can go fishing at Jewels. I can go fishing. Oh, y'all not going to talk back with me here. Yeah. I don't have to go out and do the labor because God has blessed me. So when you're finding yourself in a hard place and when life hits you hard, the first thing you got to learn how to do is get to the designated place. And that designated place is the throne of God. The Bible said, let us come boldly. This boldly means let us come with confidence. It doesn't mean that you come to God like God owes you something. Please don't go to our God like he owes you anything. Because God does not owe you nothing. He doesn't owe you not one red owner. God doesn't owe you anything, but you owe God everything. So it's boldly me that I'm coming confidently because I'm confident that God will hear me. I'm confident that God will deliver me. I'm confident that God will restore me. I'm confident that God will carry me through. Or said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, to the designated place. In other words, God's grace is everywhere because God is everywhere. So when our life hits you hard, hit back by going to the designated place. I, I met, and listen, I've won many battles on my knees. I wish I had some help over here. I've won many battles on my knees. I, I won many battles by shutting my mouth and beginning to open my mouth and telling God all the power. I wish I had some help up in here. You got to get to a designated place wherever life hits you hard. And the way to hit life back is to get back on your knees in your designated place. Yeah, the Mississippi Mass Choir said the best that your grace and mercy has brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I just want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy has brought me through. And so my brothers and sisters, I got to get out of here. While we're at our designated place, we shall also obtain divine pity. Yeah, let's look at the text. The Bible says uh, that, that, that we may obtain mercy. Yeah, that mercy means divine pity, compassion. It means mercy. That means God cares. He has compassion upon you. And, and, and this divine pity, when we get to the designated place, we will find divine pity. We will find divine mercy. We will find compassion. We will find God truly caring about our concerns. And the many ways that Jesus expressed his mercies, my brothers and sisters, they have been woven throughout the Gospels. Because we've seen God compassion throughout the Bible. We've seen God's compassion. We see his mercy throughout the scripture. He is seen stopping in a crowded procession to invite himself to be the social guest at a house 
of a despised little tax collector. Y'all know the little tax collector? Not only that, but he showed compassion to ten lepers. He cleansed ten, but only one came back and told the Lord, thank you. I wish I had some believers in here that when God does something for you, don't forget to tell the Lord, thank you. Uh, God also showed his mercy uh, with a woman who had an issue of blood. Y'all remember that woman? She spent everything she had. She went to every doctor she knew, but couldn't nobody help her situation. And God showed her some mercy. Y'all remember the blind man, the blind man? He couldn't see anything, but God uh, put some spit and some clay together and put it on his eye, and the blind man became sick. God showed his mercy. Y'all remember the dead woman? Uh, I mean, the dead child, uh, J. Arias' daughter. Uh, J. Arias came to Jesus and said, You gotta heal my daughter. My daughter is sick. She was 12 years old. And Jesus touched that daughter. Y'all remember that when Lazarus was dead, I'm showing you his mercy here. When Lazarus dead, Mary and Martha came running and crying and said, If it had been here, my brother wouldn't that have died. The Bible said, Jesus wept, called out to his father, went to the grave and said, Lazarus. Rise up and walk. I'm just telling you about mercy. Mercy says that ah, I deserve to be judged. But mercy said, but I got you covered anyhow. You ever been guilty and free at the same time? I wish I had some help up in here. You're guilty of the crime, but yet there's no punishment. That's what mercy does. Mercy says that you deserve to be put in jail. You deserve to be in the grave. You deserve to be broke. You you deserve to be sick. You deserve to be low. But mercy said, but I got you covered. I'm picking you up. I'm turning you around. I'm bringing prosperity to you. Anybody grateful for this mercy? So you got to get to the designated place. Come boldly before the throne of grace. And when you get to the throne of grace, you will find divine pity. The Bible says, and they shall obtain mercy. That's divine pity. I'm so glad that we got a God that can touch us. Yes, oh, my God. Because mercy from God is never deserved and is always generated by his good character. I'm so glad that mercy isn't dependent upon my character. Because if you hurt me, you may not get too much mercy from me. If you cuss me, you may not get too much mercy from me. If you do me wrong, you may not get too much mercy from me. But to whom much is given, much is required. And I'm just grateful that God's mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. And so, when we get to the designated place, we will find divine pity. We will find and we will obtain mercy. See, I love obtaining mercy is because while you're going through, mercy will remind you of everything that you've ever done. And God still was good to you. Anybody ever had that reflection? Come on, don't get spiritual and need you only right now. The mercy will remind you of all the wrong that you've done. But then let you understand all the good that God has done. And it should cause a response for you to lift up your hands and just tell them. And so when you find yourself in a designated place, you will obtain divine pity. But lastly, here it is. When you obtain mercy or divine pity, then you can experience his delighted pleasure. Yeah. The Bible says, and they shall find grace to help in time of need. And that's, that's what your Bible says, don't it? You, you didn't close your Bible this morning, have you? You, you will find the delighted pleasure. The Bible says, and they shall find grace to help in time of need and grace. In this particular text, my brothers and sisters, it means favor or an act of pleasure. Uh -huh. Oh, good God Almighty. The grace of God is not so much a timeless attribute as an activity of God, but it is the redeeming activity of God that manifests itself in the redemptive work of Christ by which sinners are forgiven and accepted by God. 
In other words, grace, grace cannot be earned. Grace cannot be worked out. Grace cannot be worked for. Grace is unmerited. It's something you don't even deserve. And God said, you don't even deserve my favor, but I favor you in it. And because I favor you, I here comes some act of pleasure. Good God Almighty. See, that's why people don't understand a favored believer. People can't understand a favored Christian. Why, 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 why he get the same like that? Why they get to dress like that? Why they get to live like that? Because I'm favored. No, don't get mad at me because God favors me. And I, I didn't even do anything to deserve this favor. God is, is, is he does what he want to do to whoever he chooses to do it, however he chooses to do it, whenever he chooses to do it. Don't get mad at me. Ask God. He said, if any of you like wisdom, all you got to do is ask of me. And God favored his children. The Bible says that we are blessed and highly favored. And I just need y'all to understand. New Bethel, just how favored you are. Look at you. You've been here for a good and long time. You're still opening up doors to help uh, unbelievers in the community. You're still preaching the word of God. You're still singing song of Zion. You're still leading your community the way God wants you to lead. You're favored. Yeah, and when you're favored, that, that, that there are acts of pleasure that, that come with it. I, I wish I could have some time to go through a few of the acts of pleasure, but, but, but I just want to talk about two acts of pleasure. The first act of pleasure is, is that he saved you. Yeah. See, God didn't have to save you. I wish I had some help up in there. Uh, his first act of pleasure was he saved you. Is there anybody grateful for being saved in the house this morning? The second act is, is that he's keeping you. Yeah, that's an act of pleasure. See, not only is he saving you, but he's keeping you. The Bible said he'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is yet stead on him. And so when you find yourself in a designated place, you will obtain divine pity. And by obtaining divine pity, which is mercy, then you will have delighted pleasure. You will have unfavorable uh, pleasures. And, and so I love being a child of God. I don't understand why God does what he does, when he do it, why he do it. Sometimes I, I just, I'm flabbergasted. I don't understand why God blesses me the way that he blesses me. But I'm just grateful that he keeps on blessing me. I see everybody else crying and falling out, having all kind of uh, pity parties. But me, I wake up in the morning and just have a prank gift yeah. because he's favoring me. Yeah. It may not be what I want, but I sure have what I need. Yeah. It may not be how I like it, but it show sure what I need. It. And I wish I had some favored people this morning. Dr. Lyons, I wish you're listening to me, Doc. When life hits you hard, you got to remind yourself that I'm favored because God wanted to put you on display to let the world know that Corona can stop at your door, but you can still walk upright. You can still maintain Godly character. You can still maintain integrity. You can still maintain your strong power. You can still open up your mouth and give God glory. I don't care how bad things get. I don't care how things may become. When God has favored you and when God has delighted in you, you can open up your mouth and let the world know how this joy that I have. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away because the devil didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it to me. It was my God that gave it his joy and when life hits me hard, it may hit me on every side. It may hit me from the front and the back. But one thing I know is that I'm favored. And when I'm favored, I, you may hit me, but I'm bouncing back. I, when I'm favored, you may knock me down, but I'm getting back up. I, because I'm favored, you may take from me, but I'm going to get it back. Anybody favored in here, I wish you'd help me out and say, God favors me. Come on, God favors me. I, I know I may be sick to my body, I, but I know what it is on the way. I, because God favors me. I don't care what happens to my family. I know God covers me. Because he favors me. And when life hits you hard, you gotta hit back up and open up your mouth. And remind the devil. And remind the enemy. Say God favors me. I don't care what you're throwing at me. I don't care what you're swinging at me. I'm swinging back up. 
heart or encourage someone. Hallelujah, thank God.